Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the Mana Source's recent interest in MTG Finance. So, you may have noticed if you subscribe to him that he's been making a lot of videos about MTG Finance. That's very strange. Now, the reason it's so strange is he's more of a lore or review, net deck type of channel. So for him to do MTG Finance, it's not as simple as I'm going to pick the top 10 cards. You will be criticized for it. Because those cards that you're telling people to buy, they can go up, they can go down. And some of his choices, so he picked 10 cards to buy that are not on Eternal Masters. I disagree with some of his choices and I'll go over them right now. Now, some of them are clear winners like Clever Impersonator, Contra Tarkir Mythic. Mythic is always good. Blue is always good. And it's a clone effect. Clone effects in EDH have largely stood the test of time. So this one I'm okay with. And if all 10 of them were like this, I wouldn't have any issue. But some of it is very strange. Some of the cards that he's recommending to buy are not cards that I would personally recommend to buy. And this might have to do with TCG Player. TCG Player gets a commission, if you will, off cards that are sold. So the ideal situation for TCG Player is to sell for the vendor to sell the card at the highest point possible. A back to basics for $120 makes TCG player a lot more money than a back to basic for $20. So here we see a card from Scars of Mirrodin. It is a good card. It is a very casual card. And I'm kind of surprised um, that not all these cards are like. So it's steady growth. It is playable. And even if it's reprinted, it should still be a $5 card. So this one in foil... I agree with. Uh, the prices are coming from MTG stocks, I believe. So these two cards make sense to me. They are relatively good playable cards, and even if they've been even if they get a reprint, what did you lose anyway? It's just a singleton. So the next few cards are where I suspect that some uh, some issues is coming to play. So this is a $20 card from Starter 1999. Let me repeat this again. It is a $20 card from Starter 1999. Destroy all creatures and all lands. Devastation. Why would anyone particularly need this card or want this card? I'm not sure. It seems like a weird card to choose. Now there has been steady growth and it's not likely to spike or... And it's not likely to be reprinted because land effects, uh, anything that says destroy lands is frowned upon in terms of a reprint. It is just one of those strange cards that it's quirky, it's quirky. Uh, not many people will probably know about it. And the start of 1999 is not a set that a lot of people uh, have. The next one, Manamorphous, is $10. So when he was making this video, this comes from his video, it is $10. The reason this card is not good for $10 is simply it's an uncommon slash common. As soon as it gets reprinted, it becomes $2. And it will be reprinted soon. So to recommend his subscribers buy a card that he probably knows will be reprinted soon, that is a common, uncommon. So number one, should it be reprinted, it will tank in price because of its rarity. Unless they make it like a rare, but I don't think that's happening. Number two, this card will be reprinted. I'm 100% certain we get a reprint of this card in the next two years. Probably the next year. Uh, another card that he selects is Shrine to Nyx. Uh, this is a card that has its, had its ups and downs. Pretty good card in EDH. I personally like the card. It does produce a lot of mana in EDH for me. Not a bad choice. Um, it makes sense in my opinion, especially the foil copies. It has been long enough. 
This box, however, is terrible. So give him credit. He picked free cards out of the four cards we reviewed that make sense logically in terms of buying and picking up. So I, I give credit where credit is deserved. This is a great pickup. It is some something that I would recommend picking up as well because it's hard to put this in a set. Uh, it's really difficult to put this mechanic in a set. So, all right, Metamorphosis is bad. Why would we select the most expensive tutor of the bunch? So, this tutor, we don't have a red version, but Vampiric Tutor was in Visions. We had the Gamble, which is a red tutor, if you will, in Urza Saga. That's been reprinted, I believe, twice. Uh, Vampiric Tutor has been reprinted as well in Eternal Masters. We had Enlightened Tutor, and we had Mystic Tutor. The only one that has been missed is this one, which is for creatures. In my opinion, it's actually the weaker of the bunch. It will be reprinted. No one should be buying this for $14 right now. I own many copies of it because I pretty much have a million Mirage cards, right? And I know it's going to be reprinted. It is 100% guaranteed to re be reprinted in a new master set. Now, let, before I stop, or before I go off too much in top off topic they said that ma they said that the master set would not continue i i think that's bs the same thing they said about core set as well and two years later we have another core set so okay cool last core set was supposed to be magic origins famous youtuber recommended by magic origins based on the assumption that it was the last core set and that is a perfectly fine assessment to make because honestly, no one could predict that Corset would be back in 2018. He also recommends the Urza Lands. And that's an interesting topic as well. I think the Urza Lands will be reprinted. And once they are reprinted as common uh, or uncommon, they're going to tank hard in price. The same with Metamorphosis. That card is going to tank super hard in price the worldly tutor is also going to tank super hard in price if reprinted and when reprinted so why is there this new interest in why is there a new interest in mtg finance when it's coming i mean the source that this information is coming from he does say that he is what is it um, sponsored this video is sponsored by tcgplayer.com so tcgplayer.com is a sponsor it's on all of his videos but this particular video is sponsored by them and obviously tcgplayer.com wants to sell you as many magic cards as they can and he did a fairly good job this is a person who is not known for being a financial guru he has student loan debt, he lives at home, his parents' basement. There's all types of things that indicate that he's probably not... You don't want to leave a large sum of money. Like if he was... If you had to retire, you do not want to give him your retirement money. No 401k, because he's never had a 401k, so he wouldn't know what to do with it. You wouldn't want to give him large sums of money because... Who knows, artwork or uncut sheets of magic cards... These are investments, I guess. But yet, he's making semi-decent finance videos. Why? What has changed since the GoFundMe? Because that's when it started, right? Once he started making videos again, if you look at his most recent videos, they're all, 80% of them are MTG finance based. And when I criticize the creeping tar pit, that was a pretty obvious one, but he's getting better. He's getting better and he's getting more savvy. He's picking things that actually make sense to me. And when I look at his older videos, they don't make sense. He's doing the leg work, so congrats on that. But what caused this change? This change in attitude? I mean, isn't it fascinating that someone who is financially irresponsible or... Someone who does not 
even buy health insurance, is now good at MTG Finance. It's it's fascinating. I think it has to do with TCG player saying, hey, we need you to sell our cards for us. Make a top 10 list. Instead of doing top 10 green cards or top 10 worst cards and top 10 whatever, those don't sell. If you do a top 10 worst cards, they're not going to sell. The people watching the video are not going to buy those cards. So why don't you do the top 10 cards to buy now? So the action item used to be very casual. Now the action item is buy now, buy now, buy now. So he's telling his subscribers to buy during the Christmas season, which is the worst time to buy magic cards. Let me repeat that again. The Christmas season is where the majority of people are selling their magic cards, the majority of casual players, and only people buying are the really cold sharks. So, hmm. Absolutely fascinating what's happening, that this guy is going to become the lead MTG Finance. And it, it doesn't take very much to do that. Um, it doesn't take very much to overtake the current MTG Finance people because they don't have the viewership, they don't have the listenership that the Mana Source has. The Mana Source can sign up 5,000 people for Pico Trade in one video. Of course, it can get 5,000 people to buy these cards. And I have been very critical in the past, especially about the Creeping Tarpet, that these cards are not worth buying. But now he's getting better. And I, you know, I'm a little skeptical of what the reasoning of uh, that is. But he has more buying power or he has more ability to sell cards on TCG Player than anyone in MTG Finance, any name in MTG Finance right now because they don't have the listenership. They don't have the views. They don't have the subscribers. They just frankly do not um, as the Mana Source does. So... <laughs> I mean, these last tweets really show you that he doesn't understand when he doesn't understand money. Eighty thousand dollars or ninety thousand dollars is not easy to come by. If you had a job that paid you fifteen dollars an hour, you would need to work three years, pretty much, paying tax and stuff, to get ninety thousand dollars. And fifteen dollars an hour is not a bad job. That's not like a terrible job. The average American, the average American makes about thirty-five to forty thousand a year. So for him to make double that money in less than a few weeks, in a few weeks or less, and then joke about GoFundMe all the time, uh, is a little disheartening. But he has his act together. I mean, his MTG Finance. I can't criticize him on some of most of his picks. Now his uncommons are a little strange, but uh, he'll learn. And he'll actually come to dominate MTG Finance, which is ironic, but actually something I encourage because this I can hold him accountable for. These are numbers and data and facts. So in two months, we will see if these cards will be reprinted. In two years, we'll see. Anyway, that is it, guys. Bye, guys.